Okay. All right, so four one is called rating and degree measure. We are getting into trig, okay? Um, this is a long chapter. We're gonna pause like midway after four three to take a quiz, and then we will take a test all the way at the end. Um, like I said, it goes to like four eight. I don't know if we're gonna make it a four eight or we'll stop at four seven, but you'll take a test there, and then we get one more before the end of the semester, one more chapter. So we start with the basics, the parts of an angle, okay? Obviously, this is just some vocab terminology. The initial side is the bottom side of my angle or where the angle starts. The arrow tells you in which direction that angle is going. And then the terminal side is where it stops. The point where those two sides meet is called the vertex. So if I say the initial side is at zero, it means it's right at the zero, zero line on the right-hand side of your graph. Eventually, we're going to be putting these on unit circles and that kind of stuff. A positive angle goes counterclockwise. So it goes counterclockwise if it starts, if your initial point is at zero, it starts there and goes counterclockwise. The negative one goes clockwise. So it, it, it points down or it progresses down and around. So positive, counterclockwise, negative, clockwise. You don't have anything to write down yet, right? Right, okay. Okay, then there's two ways to measure these angles. One is radians and one is degrees. So a radian is the measure of the central angle of a circle that intercepts an arc equal in length to the radius of the circle. Most of our radian measures are based on having a radius of one. So if you think about a circle, like if I actually look at this circle, right? And I told you the radius was one. What's the circumference of this circle? How do we find circumference? pi times diameter or 2 pi r, right? So if I give you the radius is 1, what's the circumference of this circle? 2 pi. Good. So all the way around my circle is 2 pi, okay? And that's what's going to happen on every unit circle. If the, so if the radius is 1, okay? Sometimes the radius is not 1 and we move things around. But for that, it would be a radius of 1. So 2 pi is the same thing as 2 times 3.14 right? Or approximated as 3.14, which means all the way around my unit circle would be 6.28 units. So most of the time you will see radians in terms of pi, like pi, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, that kind of thing. All the way around would be 2 pi. But sometimes we see radians without pi in it. And that we would compare to the entire unit circle being 6.28, okay? So if I said that there was something with three, like a radian of three, and I want to graph it, halfway on my circle is going to be pi or 3.14. So a, a line that, or an angle that's graphed that has a measurement of three is going to be just shy of that. So it's like there, okay? This would be three. So if you see pi, again, if you see pi in your answer, then that's, that, those are way more common. If you don't see pi in your answer and you don't see a degree symbol, then you're using it in terms of radians. And in that, we would say that the whole circle is 6.28 and then kind of cut it in half. That's your 3.14 and go from there. So this book does everything in radians first and then equates it to degrees, which is probably what you'll be on Monday, okay? Just know that all the way around would be 6.28 or 2 pi. And then we're gonna kind of go from there. Okay, so let's say I wanted to know what 4.5 radians look like, okay? I'm gonna take a circle. Circle, oh, come on. Okay, I'm gonna say if I go straight across that diameter, this would be zero, double back is 6.28. And this is 3.14, because I know that's half of my 2 pi. You with me so far? So I'm going to go a little less than 3.14 and say that's 3. And then divide from 3 to 0 in three parts. It doesn't have to be perfect, but like that. This is 1. This is 2. I have the 3. Extend those lines out, and I get 4, 5, and 6. So then if I wanted to graph 4.5, I would start at the zero, 
and I'd go around to about halfway between four and five, and that's gonna be 4.5 radians. Again, more common is gonna be something like pi over two, pi over four, seven pi over six, three pi over, something like that. But you will see these mixed in. If they don't have a degree symbol on them, then even if they don't have pi, they're a radian. So if I had 4.5 degrees, obviously that's in degrees. But if I just have 4.5 and there's no degree symbol on there, this is a radian. I don't know if I'll be able to test you on this. Obviously, I, don't, I haven't even gotten there yet. I have to figure out how to do trig canvas quiz ways. Okay, But if you do, so normally I would say this is definitely going to be on your quiz. Um, where I'll give you some sort of radian and you have to graph it. So just be prepared for that. But it is on the homework, okay? So just make sure you know how to do that. So in standard position, it means that it starts to the right side of your x-axis. So all these angles are in standard position, okay? They start on the right-hand side where x would be, the x-axis would be, okay? For something that goes all the way around the circle, we just said this, this is two pi would be all the way around. If I wanted to go half the circle, then it'd be two pi cut in half, which is pi. So here to here is pi. A quarter the way, a quarter of two pi would be pi over two. So that's at the top over here. Three quarters the way goes all the way back down to here, which is three pi over two. So these are called your quadrant angles, okay? To sum this up, zero is on the right, pi over two is at the top, pi is on the left, three pi over two is on the bottom, and then we double back around to two pi. So those are the first kind of angles you wanna know, okay? They're called the quadrant angles. Again, zero on the right, pi over two at the top, pi on the left, three pi over two on the bottom, and then two pi around on, all the way back around, okay? So you could be asked to graph something like pi over four or three pi over four, and you'll wanna be able to graph those, those angles. So this one says, draw and label each angle in standard position, state which quadrant the angle lies in. So I always start with my quadrant angles. Like if I'm gonna draw something by hand, that's how I start it. So I'm gonna get a color you can see. And then I'm gonna start with three pi over two. So three pi over two starts here, right? This was zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. This angle is going to, let me do a different pi. Start here and go around and stop at three pi over two. Then it says state which quadrant the angle lies in. So the same quadrants apply here. This is one, this is two, this is three, and this is four. So if I asked you what quadrant that lies in, you would tell me it's what? Three. Almost, what do you call it if it lies on the line itself? What axis is this? Y axis. So just like coordinate points, if they fall on the axis, we say the axis. I, B, and this is just beta. Those are just Greek symbols. Okay, don't freak out about the symbols. This is alpha, that's beta. It's good, it's actually a really good college prep because all of your sororities and fraternities are all letters, right? Like Greek letters. All right, so this one, two pi would be, I'd start at zero and I go all the way back around and I finish at two pi. What quadrant would that be? X-axis. Good, X-axis. All right, then the last one, seven pi over four. So this is not one of our quadrant angles. So let's think about where this lies. Seven over four is the same thing as what mixed number? Ooh, stumped you on that one. One and three fourths. One and three fourths pi. So if this, if I start again here, and this is a half pi, this is one pi, this is one and a half pi. If I keep going to the next one, it's two pi, which is too big, right? Halfway between a half and one and a half and two is your one and three fourths pi. What quadrant is that in? 
fourth. Good. Mr. Schweizer? Yes. So on the topic of like the y-axis and x-axis as an answer, does it matter if it's in um, like would pi and two pi have the same answer as x-axis or one be negative? No, they would both be x-axis. You said pi okay. and two pi. Yeah, they would both be x-axis. Yes. Yeah, both x-axis. Good question. Okay, so coterminal angles are angles in standard position that have the same terminal side. Okay, the difference is how many times they go around my circle. So if I told you that I had an angle that was pi over 2, okay, that would look like that. But if I told you I had an angle that was 5 pi over 2, which is 2 and 1 half pi, it would start here, it would go all the way around to 2 and then back up to the 1 and a half. So these are called coterminal angles. Two angles whose ter start and terminal are the same spot. It's just how many times they go around the circle. It could be more or less. The way we find coterminal angles, if I'm given an actual angle measurement, is add or subtract 2 pi. So I want to go one more time around the circle, or I want to go one less time around the circle. So I will take my angle, and I will add or subtract 2 pi. So if I had this pi over 2 and I wanted to find a coterminal, I would add 2 pi. 2 pi becomes 4 over 2 pi, and this becomes 5 pi over 2, which is the same answer, okay? You will usually leave answers, actually always, sorry. You will always leave answers improper when it comes to radians. So you'll write that as 5 pi over 2. All right, so A says find two positive and negative angles that are coterminal to the given angle. So I'm going to take A, and I'm going to find the positive ones first, okay? So I'm going to add 2 pi. I would get 2 pi over 1, which becomes 8 pi over 4, and then add negative 3 pi and positive 8 pi. That's 5 pi over 4. So that's the first positive coterminal angle. Now I want another one. So I'm going to take that 5 pi over 4 and add 2 pi to it again, or 8 pi over 4, and I get 13 pi over 4. So there are my two positive coterminal angles. Okay. How did you get 8 pi over 4? I, I, I added 2 pi, right? And I have to give it a denominator of 4, so I have to change both the numerator and the denominator. Oh, right. Okay. There's a lot of adding fractions in this chapter. You're going to get real good at changing that little denominator. All right, then I want to find negative ones. So I'm going to, na I'm going to take the negative 3 pi over 4, and I'm going to subtract 2 pi from it. And I'm going to make that 8 pi over 4 again, and I get negative 11 pi over 4. There's one negative angle. And then I want another negative, so I'm going to do negative 11 pi over 4 minus 2 pi or 8 pi over 4. And I get negative 19 pi over 4. I need to, the direction said 2. 2 positive, 2 negative. Yeah, but you can't use itself as a coterminal. You have to find the coterminal to that angle. Mr. Chris, why is it? Yeah. So back at the top where it's a, um, the uh, 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi. Yeah. How did you get 5 pi over 4? Where did that come from? So I need to change 2 pi over 1 to be something over oh. 4. Okay, I see. And then what's the number after 5 pi over 4? In the, that, the so that also, that also started as 2 pi, but then I changed it to be 8 pi over 4. Oh, okay. So if I'm listing these, I'm going to do my two positives are 5 pi over 4, 13 pi over 4. And my two negatives, negative 11 pi over 4 and negative 19 pi over 4. Now, if I graphed all of these, they would be exactly the same, the same angle. Same initial, same terminal. It's just some are going to go around the circle more than once. I think the web is signed says list them in order. So be careful and pay attention. Like, I think it's the smallest angle to the largest angle. So just keep that in mind. All right, so B, I'm going to find two positives. So I'm going to add 2 pi over 1. Multiply by 6, multiply by 6, which means I'm doing 5 pi over 6 plus 12 pi over 6. 
and I get 17 pi over 6. There's my first positive. Do it again, 17 pi over 6 plus 12 pi over 6, 29 pi over 6. There's my second positive. And then I want to find my negatives. So 5 pi over 6 minus 2 pi or 12 pi over 6. And I get negative 7 pi over 6. And then negative 7 pi over 6 minus 12 pi over 6. And I get negative 19 pi over 6. So be careful, all of these answers are kept exact, which means you're not using your, your calculator for a lot of this stuff. You'll see when we need it, but right now we don't, like when we get to right triangle trig, but not right now we don't. So the other thing is you might see something that is so negative that when you add two pi to it, it's still negative. So if I wanna find a, code, a positive code terminal to negative five pi over two, and I add 2 pi, I'd get negative 5 pi over 2 plus 4 pi over 2, and I get negative pi over 2. That counts as a negative coterminal angle. That is not a positive coterminal angle. So I'd have to add 2 pi to it again. Does that make sense? So if it says positive coterminal, I have to go until it's positive. And if it says negative, I have to go until it's negative. Same thing if it was like so big that when I subtract 2 pi, it doesn't give me a negative. I have to subtract it again. But that negative there, could that be used as your negative? Yes, good terminal? question. Yes, it can. Okay. Yep. All right, now we're going to talk about angles and degrees. So everywhere there's a radian, there's also a degree. I always think this is the easy part because your brain obviously understands degrees already. On the right-hand side is zero degrees. At the top would be that right angle, which is 90 degrees. On the left is 180, on the bottom is 270, and if I come all the way back around again, I stop at 360. So every single angle on your unit circle, which is what we're going to study a lot more when we get to 4-2, has both angle measurements and radian measurements, okay? If it's going counterclockwise, they are positive. If it's going clockwise, they are negative. So this is a negative 90, a negative 180, a negative 270, and this would be a negative 360. We will fill in that entire thing next week when we add on the points and you'll understand what that is, okay? For right now, you just need to know kind of like your quadrant angles. Because we find coterminal with radians by adding two pi, which is an entire circle, you would find coterminal angles in degrees by adding and subtracting 360. That's the equivalent of two pi, right? 360, same thing as two pi. To convert from degrees to radians, so if I start in degrees and I want to go to radians, I multiply my angle times pi over 180. If I want to go from radians to degrees, I multiply my angle times 180 over pi. So if you think about what we just said, we said 360 is the equivalent of 2 pi, right? So if I'm in degrees, which is 360, I would multiply this times pi over 180, cancel through my zeros, 18 goes into 36 twice, and I get two pi. If I wanted to go in the other direction, two pi times 180 over pi, the pi's cancel, two times 80, 360. So if you're ever stuck in radians and you don't know where that lies on your circle, you can always convert to degrees and find it. It's just extra work that eats up time. You don't need it. You also just want to get to know your circle enough to be able to graph them in both. Now be careful because if something says 2.3, would you say that's in degrees or radians? Degrees. So that's actually radians because it doesn't have the degree symbol. You can have a radian that's a number. It doesn't have to have pi in it. If it said 2.3 degrees, that's how you know it's degrees. So degrees have to have the degree symbol on them. If it doesn't, it's a radian, okay? You don't often see something like 180 radians, but you could. Usually they're between zero and six, but just think, just think if it doesn't have a degree, it means it's a radian. All right, 
I, hang on. So this is degree, minute, second notation, and it's a different way to write a degree measurement. So you need a graphing calculator or a scientific calculator to do this, but I'm gonna show you how to get from degrees, from decimal degree to degree, minute, second notation, okay? So if you have this and you need to know what that looks like in degree, okay? Then I'm gonna show you on the graphing utility and then I'll show you on a scientific one. Let me see. Okay, so on a graphing utility, if I wanna type that in and convert it into degree, I have to type 31 and then I go to, there's a little button over the apps menu that says angle. I go second apps and there's my degree symbol. I click it. I go 47, I go second back to that apps menu, which is the angle. And the second one has a single tick mark. I go there. Now the third one, which is your second, so that is degree, then minutes, then seconds, is not in that same menu because that would make too much sense. That one is actually above your plus symbol and then you get to it from the green one. So green plus symbol and then I hit enter and there is my angle in degrees. You are going to need to know how to go in both directions from degree minute second notation like we just did and then also back. So if I had that answer 31.78666667 and I wanna convert it to degree minute second notation, I go second back to that angle menu and there's a little thing under number four that says arrow DMS. Hit that and it will convert it back into degree minute second notation. So especially when we get to law of sines and cosines, you're gonna see these and you need to know how to convert back and forth. When we get to word problems and bearings, you're gonna to need to know how to get from one to the other, okay? On most scientific, yeah, go ahead. Oh, where's that angle? What'd you say? Are you on a, second, you go to what? on a graphing utility or on a scientific one? Graphing. Graphing is second apps. There's a little word called angle over it. You see that? Not yet. Okay, here. It's here. You don't see that. That's why. Okay, I would type 31. There's a button like this one on this calculator. I hit that. Go to degree. 47. Hit that button again. Single tick mark. 12. Hit that button again. Double tick mark. Enter, and it's going to convert it. And if I want to go back the other way, I hit that same menu but I go all the way over to arrow DMS, which is on the second screen, and it converts it back. Again, you're gonna need to know how to do this with a bunch of stuff this chapter. So you wanna make sure that you get comfortable with the conversion of the degree minute second notation to decimal degree. Now, let's say you didn't have a calculator. It wouldn't be fun, but you can convert this without it. The first number is the degree, so that's your whole number. So it'd be 31. The second number, is your minutes. So I would divide it by 60 because that's how any, however minutes are in an hour. And then the third one is your seconds. So I divide it by 3,600, which is how many seconds are in an hour. And then I would just add those together. But every single calculator, scientific or graphing utility has some sort of an angle uh, part that converts it. So you can use it. All right, I am going to, okay, so multiplied by pi over 180. B, I'm going from, radians to degrees, right? This will become something we know off the top of our head, but for right now, two goes into 180, 90 times, so it's 90 degrees. 160 times pi over 180, again, zeros can cancel, and then these are both divisible by two, eight, and nine, and I get eight pi over nine. All of these answers will be kept exact. You'll never put that into a calculator and round it. And then 3 pi over 4, 180 over pi, pi's cancel, 4 goes into 180, 45 times, 3 times 45 is 135. 
So again, if you're given a unit circle, these will not be angles that are already on your unit circle because then you could literally just look at that angle and see the number next to it. That's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Draw it out. So I used to, you would have a quiz grade, half a quiz grade was that, and then I used to let them use it again, or I'd give them the day before to fill out a little one because the timing just takes too long to fill it out every day. But obviously, the better you can get at unit circle, the better off you're going to be.